Well, good evening. Uh, we're, we're heading up towards 8 o'clock in Eastern Time, or it may be 8 o'clock Eastern Time right now. I just it just changed. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg. I want to welcome you to EdChat Interactive. Uh, it looks like an awful lot of people were interested in this, in this topic of active learning strategies for the classroom. Because um, we don't want our students to just sit back and pretend that they're learning. We want that, you know, we understand as educators that if they're actively participating in the learning, they're going to learn things much better. Now, knowing that, we also know that if you want to learn these techniques, you should be participating as well and you should be active. So we're going to be using some of these active learning techniques tonight and we hope that you participate in them. So let me explain that in a minute. Um, because that's really the whole basis of what we, we try to do at EdChat Interactive. Uh, we, instead of having the typical webinar where somebody's up here running slides the way you see now, um, or even where the slide is, slides expanded the way uh, you see them now, uh, we want to make sure that people interact, that they participate, and that they get a chance to reflect. And in order to do that, we use a platform called Shindig, which has better interactivity than any platform that I've seen. Um, so before I talk about Shindig, uh, just a reminder that we have a couple other sessions coming up on November 7th. Uh, uh, we're all concerned about internet safety, and we're also all concerned because we want the kids using the internet. Uh, so um, we're going to have Desiree Alexander uh, from Louisiana talking about how it's, how students can be safe and informed. And then the following week on uh, November 15th, which is a Thursday, uh, we're going to have Dave Blanchard, who's going to be talking about really cool ed tech tools from around the world that we can use in our classes. So those are the next two EdShed Interactives. And since you all figured out how to get how to register for this one, um, you just go to edshedinteractive.org and you can register for those. And hope that you like them. But now let me let me just go through Shindig. You all have a screen uh, that looks a little bit like this. Uh, you see there's a slide on the left, there's me on stage uh, to the right of that, um, and you see avatars floating around the screen. And then you see you have a video avatar yourself, and around your avatar there should be a menu. Um, all the way on the left is something called text chat. That that's the way that you. That's one way that you can interact with the other participants here, um, and also interact with the presenters. And I'd like you to try that out right now. I'd like you to click on that text chat option, and what you're going to get is a screen that looks like this. You're going to see the, the pictures of everybody else who's there. On the right, you'll see a um, a box. Let me just expand that a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. Um, you can see a, a, a text box and what I'd like you to do is in that text box why don't you introduce yourself and pose one question that you'd like to learn tonight. Um, so the, the one person who who can't see what you're typing in is me, so I hope that you're doing that. Um, but the uh, but everybody else will be able to see it and if you see something that looks especially interest, interesting to you Feel free to comment on it. Say, "Wow, that's a, you know, so and so. That was a that was a really good question." Or, "I had that, that same question too, and here's my take on it." So, uh, please interact with each other. We learn as much from each other as we learn from the from the presenters. So that's the first way of interacting through that text box. And of course, if you click on that um, icon on the left, it'll it'll come back to uh, to this view again. Um, Actually, I'm going to go the other way. Um, so the second way of interacting is through asking a question. Now, you can always ask a question through text chat. And uh, Matt will, will try to answer it. Um, or maybe some of the other participants will try to answer it. But you could also click on that question mark. Uh, that sends your question to me. And then I can pass the question to Matt. Or if it's a technical question, I can I can ask it, you know, answer it myself. Um, Third way of interacting is through raising your hand. If uh, Matt says something and you'd like to come up on stage and discuss it, or if you, uh, or if you have something that that you want to say, click on the raise hand button. I'll see it and I can bring you up on stage to discuss it with Matt. 
we're also going to be having times where Matt's going to ask people to come up on stage where he's, he's going to say, you know, I just talked about this, but I want to give you a practical example. Can somebody come up on stage and we can talk about how, how this might be applied in a classroom situation or how this might be applied in a school? So please, at those times, uh, raise, click on that raise hand button. I'll see you. I can bring you up and then you can discuss your situation with Matt and allow everybody else to learn as well. And then... The fourth way of interacting is through small uh, small group chats. And uh, we'll also be doing that a few times during the session. Sometimes uh, we do a practice, but there's, there's a lot of material today, so I don't want to do a practice on that. In the small group chats, Matt's going to pose a question, and he's going to say, I'd like you to break up into small groups, and then I'll explain how to do that. But basically, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the video avatar of another person. Then the two of you are going to be in a private video conversation where you can talk about that question, how it applies to your schools and, and your situation. Um, so those are the, the, the group chats, the small group chats. That means, again, there's... There's four different ways of interacting. There's text chats, there's asking questions, there's raising your hand on coming up, and then there's the uh, small group discussions. And so let me just find Matt, let me bring Matt up. That's, that's our introduction. And I'll bring Matt up, I'll bring my slides down. So, um, and Matt, there you, there you are. And, you know, I just have to give my condolences because, um, you know, the, Boston, you guys didn't make the World Series this year, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. You did make the World Series this year. Yeah. It was the Yankees that didn't make the World Series this year. So, that congratulations. The, I saw somebody who posted, what's the difference between a hot dog at Yankee Stadium and a, uh, a hot dog um, at Fenway? You can still buy a hot dog at Fenway this week. Perfect. So, um, so you must be. So you know, are you going to any of the games? Are you just watching them? Uh, no, I'm unfortunately, I'm not able to make it. Uh -huh. Although I think one of our participants, one of our Milford peeps, Christine Bemis, I think is uh, is off to one of the games. From from what I hear. Wow. Well, good luck. Wow. So, um, so I have your first slide up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring myself down, and then you'll just tell me when to advance the slides. And when we get to the small group work, I'll, I'll come back up. Okay? okay. So go ahead. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. This is uh, one, of my, one of my first times running this. So if um, you have questions, please stop me. This is not something I've been comfortable doing, and I think that's part of – the big piece of this is that we as educators need to take risks too. And some of the tools that we're going to talk about and share with you um, is going to be able to do that. So uh, this is the first time I've ever just talked in front of a computer screen with nobody who's on the other side of it that I can see personally and to get the, the read off them. So feel free to use the hand or the question mark if things are too fast, too slow. Um, as a presenter, I'd love your feedback to even after of, of how this went. So this is a little bit of who I am. Um, that's my Twitter uh, handle. Hopefully we get comments after. Go on now and invite some of your friends there. Uh, the Tech Innovation Live is the blog that I try to do and just have random thoughts and, and, and post it. And, and as you'll see in the next slide, you will... Oh, the other fun thing is that I'm not even controlling the slide. So uh, it's going to be quite fun as well. So I'm hoping to break up this hour um, into three sections and each section covering a different piece of the, the event tonight, talking about what is active learning, sharing some tools with you. And from what I've been told, um, the website that has the tools was either emailed out to you or if not, I'm going to put it up on the screen. And then at the, at the end, really looking at the environments that you can utilize these tools in. Um, so this is kind of my thought for the night, and hopefully we can get into those small groups uh, because I think when we have those conversations with other educators around the country, then you learn something as well. And I may be popping in and out of groups um, just to get, get a feel as well. So quickly about me on the next slide is just having the opportunities that I have had from attending Springfield College, being an elementary school teacher, both third, fifth, and sixth grade is, is my background in the classroom, 
Um, I've also had an opportunity to launch a one-to-one -one, uh, initiative in, in Berkshire County. About 14 years ago, we went one-to-one -one in our middle schools, and it was a great experience. From there, I moved into uh, principal role. I was uh, lucky enough to be principal in two different districts, in Attleboro um, and in Natick. Uh, most recently completed my degree at Boston College on educational leadership, and now here in the Milford Public Schools as the director of digital learning um, and innovation. So I share this with you because I think it's important to know who the person is, uh, the lens of the person speaking to you uh, moving forward, because some of the things that are said are going to be from a district or a building leader lens. So we're going to dive right into it in the next slide that looking at, so we're going to advance one slide. Awesome. So it, it, it's funny because I just actually came from the school committee um, which is downstairs here at Milford High School where I'm at. And this is this was the topic, talking about what the vision is for, for technology. And, and this is what I feel that it is moving forward, is we have to make our classrooms as dynamic as the world around us. Things are moving rapidly. And as you see in the next slide, things evolve. Things are evolving in the classroom. Things are evolving as we are teaching our students right in front of our eyes. And, and in the next slide, you'll see other professions are evolving. I know if we take a trip or you go to the hospital, you want to make sure those professionals have the most current technology and have the most current um, professional development. So it's critical in our profession because if you look at the next slide, are we evolving as a profession? And if you look at that, and, and this isn't everywhere, and I know there's, there's some fabulous um, collaborative learning events, but unfortunately, for the most part, the look familiar side, the classroom, looks similar to in most of our schools right now. So that's my question to you tonight is, is our profession evolving at a similar rate as other professions? So we're going to dive into it in the next slide, that one of the things that we look at is, are we as educators, and I'm a 47-year-old educator, and I was a teacher a long time ago, we cannot be teaching the same way we did multiple years ago, or even worse, at when we were students. We have to prepare our students for their future, and sometimes that means taking a risk. Like, like I said, for me, it's trying something new like this tonight and, and trying to really hone our skills as educators. So in the next slide, you will see that one of the things that concerns me in the profession is that we are not making independent learners. And hopefully some of the tools and strategies you see tonight are taking the responsibility off of the teacher and putting it on the student to be the learners, to have, find some discovery learning points and to have the tools to do that. So another point on the next slide that, that you will see is we're talking about active learning. And obviously I'm joking around, but I've been to, I have a gym membership and I've watched a lot of golf events, but that doesn't mean I'm in shape watching other people work out. And it doesn't mean I'm a good golfer for anyone who's played with me knows that, but I've watched a lot. So we can't have our students, as you see in the next slide, come to school and watch teachers work. Students are not going to retain the information by watching professionals, professional educators, just work. We need to involve our students in that learning process. So as we move forward, so if we go to the next slide, what you'll see is we want to transition and using the same analogy as golfing and, and going to the gym, is that we as educators have to be facilitators of skills. We have to come up with the plans. We have to come up with in this metaphor, the workouts or what a great swing is for, for a golfer. We as the educators have to have the tools and then provide the plans for the learners to do the activity. Because when you see in the, in the next slide, one of the things that I really like to, to stress is that the one doing the talking is the one doing the learning. And, and teachers are creating learning environments. And what are we doing as educators to create that learning environment? So as we move forward with the tools, um, hopefully it'll support you in your process to create that. So we're going to move on to the next slide because I think this is, uh, this is a shift I think our profession can make. We talk a lot about learning targets, 
And we talk a lot about I can statements or students will be able to fill in the blank. I'm hoping we can transition to an I did environment where at the end of the learning, students have an opportunity to share out all the things that they did. And this little switch of switching from I can to I did, I think will make that switch to passive learners to active learners within, within the classroom. So if we go to the next slide, one of the things is this is where we're going to start to break out. So that was just a, a, a little bit of, of the activities. And my question for you tonight is in the small groups, if you could click on, and I know some, um, a lot of people don't have their camera on, which is, which is okay too. You can do it through um, text. If um, with today's learners having many learning styles and needs, what are some activities you incorporate to increase active student engagement? So we're going to talk about student engagement. And, and Mitch, maybe you can tell them how to get into those groups or what we need to do. Okay, so so this is this is your chance to be active, um, all of you, because uh, I'm I'm going to bring Matt down also. So he's going to be listed as a participant along with all of you, and uh, click on somebody's avatar. Uh, Matt, Matt, you can start this off by clicking on somebody's avatar and generate a discussion. So about uh, with today's learner having many learning styles and needs, what are some activities that you incorporate already to increase active student engagement? And let's let's get a list. If you don't click on somebody's avatar, if you can click on the text box, and if you can type in some ideas of different activities that either you've used or other teachers have used uh, and share those, that's a close second. So those are the two things. I'm going to bring myself down, and then Matt and I will come back up in a couple minutes. So my group yeah. was Fred and Christine. Is there a way to break them back up, or how does that? How does this part work? Well, they'll break each other. They'll break themselves back up when they're ready to break up. Um, they just separate okay. from the group, and that breaks them up. If uh, they happen to be getting some feedback from us talking, um, they can stop that by 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 breaking up. But it's not you know critical for them to break up if they don't want to. Okay. Okay. Um, so what, that, were, what were some of the things that you guys were talking about? I'd love to bring them up when they get out. I'm going to jump back into their group, have them break, and I'd love to have them share. Well, so so why don't we just ask, could one, of you, could one of the three of you or could somebody else just raise your hand, click on that raise hand button and, um, and come up here and talk, or a couple of you? Um, yeah, it's fun. Coast to coast. Christine's here in Milford and, and Fred's out in Orange County. So I think that's a good, and one's a second grade teacher and one's a college professor. So two good um, conversations in our group. So I'm going to voluntold to see if they, they jump up. Okay. So uh, should I just bring Christine up then? Absolutely. Okay. Christine, sorry about this, uh, but um, you're now coming up. Yes. And I hope you don't mind too much. Well, welcome, welcome to the big time. There she oh, is. Oh my lord! What are you doing? <laughs> so Christine works here with me in Milford, and she is a fabulous example of some active learning and taking risks. And in our small group, we shared a little. But if you want to share some of the things, even today, um, what you did, that'd be great. Um, well, we were sharing what we've been learning about Earth Materials using Buncee. Um, it's an online tool. And um, I kind of just turned it over to the kids and said, really, just try to click and figure it out. And they really did a nice job. Um, what else do we do? Mm -hmm. A lot of role playing, tons of fun. We do rhymes and rhythms and I don't know, um, trying to think. You kind of put me on the spot, Matt. Perfect. All right. Well, that was great because we're going to move on a sec, but I'd love to have Fred have a, have a share a little bit and then we'll move on. Okay. So here comes Fred and... Here he comes. Okay, Fred, you're up. Okay, you mean I'm going to share? I want. I'm supposed to share what we talked about or what I did. Some of the things that you shared in our mini group. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm a college professor, but I totally believe in active learning. Uh, that I figure that the less I talk, the more they learn. So the technique I do to draw participation from my classes is called think, pair, share. I might talk for a few short minutes on a topic <clears throat> and ask the class to work on a similar problem while I walk around the room and circulate. And after they've worked alone, that's the think part, 
After a couple minutes, I say, all right, now pair up with someone who sits to your left or your right or in front of you or behind you and compare your answers. If your answers are the same, it must be right. If your answers are different, you need to go through each other's work and find out what happened and do that for the next five minutes while I continue to walk around the room. And then uh, I have a random number generator where I call on a student at random to share their answer with the class. They actually come up to the front of the room while I sit down like a student and learn <laughs> from them. And I do that as often as possible every day, every class. So think, pair, share. I love yeah, that. it's a Japanese teaching technique that awesome. I'm sure everyone's heard about. And since we're kind of like my question earlier was, is there a chat box? I've been trying to scroll and raise my hand and find a place where I can type something in to the group so, or so to the moderator a, without using down, my microphone. Is there such a thing? If yes. you look down on the left, I think of the screen where it says there's little like heads where it says participants. Where is so, it? Like at seven o'clock. Let me. Oh, it's in the ask. You click, you click on the question mark. Well, the question mark goes to me, but there should be next to you. Uh, let me let me just make this larger a second. You, you should have this um, menu next to your avatar, and all the way on the left is, is a text box, is an avatar for a text box. It shows two quotes. Do you have that? I don't. <laughs> I have a different screen. You know, I, I, don't, I don't have it either. My avatar okay. just has a mic microphone mute button, a screen share button, and a full screen, and that's it. Those three so things. So the bottom screen, your actual physical screen, it doesn't? Oh, at the bottom. Oh, I found it. Okay. Awesome. At the very Good. bottom, the little, pe the little headshot with three heads and the number six yeah. under it. Yes. So those, okay. And, Christine, and you hover your mouse over it. It says participants. Yes. Click on that, right. and there is all the chat. Yay! Yes. I found okay. it. There you go. Okay. So, um, okay. So I guess we, this this is where we were. Um, so thanks, thanks, Fred. And I guess Matt, you want to you want. Should we go back to the slides? Sure. Well, I'll jump back in because um, I know some people have different screen settings and different uh, pre preferences. So um, moving forward, the second kind of chunk that I wanted to look at, um, if we go forward one slide. So we did that. We came to the stage. We had some people share. Um, so here are some resources. And I'm not sure how if they were emailed before or not. But if you type this into a different browser, if you, um, you'll get a chance to look at some resources. But actually, before we do that, can we go one slide up and then we'll come back? So these are some of the resources that I think will drive some active learning within your classroom. And I know um, just from experience, some of the things that Christine's done with, with, with Flipgrid and um, some of these other tools. So... I'm going to give just a quick each of them, and then I'd love um, if you wanted to visit the resource page just to look at some of them, and then we'll come back and kind of talk about it. So I'm going to go around like a clock on this slide. So Buncee is a tool, actually, Christine was just talking about. It's where students create interactive presentations within Drive. Newzella is a world, um, world news uh, tool, which provides reading um, at students' uh, Lexile level and also adds questions. Under that is Mentimeter, which is a fabulous tool that I use all the time in presentations. It's kind of like Wordle, but in real time, where you can create uh, graphs, word puzzles right in, on the spot. And I just used it recently in the MassQ presentation where I asked what skills participants want their students to have when they graduated. They put the answer in, and it made word clouds just like that. The next two underneath, Padlet is almost like sticky notes across um, a, a board, and then you can add sticky notes down to add to a, con a concept. Uh, the next word, Poplet, is just really creating interactive webs online. Class Dojo is a positive behavior system that you can utilize. Flipgrid is where students can or teachers can video record themselves and make video responses. 
pull everything is pretty self-explanatory in the sense that it helps you make polls for different things or surveys. Edpuzzle is one of my new favorites where it takes videos from YouTube and you can add your own questions. Kahoot is a gaming system for questions. And then Pear Deck allows teachers to have interactive slideshows. So if we go back one slide for a second, this is the short link to the resource document that I put together for tonight. So if you type that into a different browser and or it was in the confirmation email, you'll have a chance to look at some resources and maybe in groups if we don't want to look at um, individual resources right now, you can just talk to, to somebody in your small group. So Mitch, if we can go to the large group again, and then if we want to jump into, if you go two slides up is the question. Um, oh, it, so while we're talking about this, one of the things when you're designing blended learning lessons or active learning activities, really, these are self-reflection questions that I like to have teachers ask. Um, who are the learners in front of you? Does the plan that you're creating match the goals? What impact do you have? I think it's important to know what success will look like. And then this last piece is where we're at. What resources exist to support learners? And we are going to look at some resources, hopefully right now, either individually or in a small group, really talk about how having these resources will shift passive learners to more active participants using some of these tools. So can I just ask a couple, like when you say who are the learners, the learners are the people who are in your class. So what, uh, other than that, what, what do you mean by that particular question? So what I, when, because especially for, so elementary for the most part have a group of 20 something, depending on uh, class size for most of the day. When you get mm -hmm. into uh, middle and even high school, you may have five periods of 20 students. And one, uh, one group of students may be much more passive and you're going to have to really pull out some information and, and have a tool that matches their participation level or even their um, usage level of specific tools. And then you may have uh, learners in front of you who are high flyers that just are real discovery learning um, advocates, that they really can dive into something and take risks. So your approach to the plan may be different for that group. You also may have in front of you a, a class of students who are either high risk or have some very special needs for instruction. So to make one plan for all your classes, you can't just say we're going to have active learning today. You have to plan for the students who are in front of you. And you may have the same lesson topic or unit goal, but the learners that come and sit in front of you may be very different and you're going to have to ensure your instructional pace and practice and tools match the students that are sitting in front of you. Okay, so then you have your learning goals, you develop a plan to match them. What do you mean by what is the impact of what we're learning? So when, when you have that plan, if, if the plan is just let's get through this work, the impact of learning is gonna be very low. If you're going to be asking critical questions and having students collaborate, deliberate, and really make the learning their own, you're going to impact those individual learners at a much higher level. So where it go, go, where the shift happens from passive learning to active learning is through these questions of what are you, what are the, what's the impact you're going to get out of your students? If you give an overarching question around, let's say, water pollution and say, tell me some of the real factors that are causing some illnesses in pick a country due to water pollution. And then the teacher get out of the way and let students start to come up with the answers and dive into the learning. Students are going to retain a lot more when they have are driving the content um, discovery. Okay. All right. So now what we want to find out from the participants here is how would you use some of the tools that you, that you presented or maybe other tools that they like to use yeah. in order to take passive learners who are used to or maybe used to sitting in the classroom and just watching the teacher perform um, to actually run their own learning. So um, I'm going to bring you down and then maybe you can pair up with some of the other people in the yeah, group. Here. That's great. 
Okay, and uh, let me shrink the size of this so that you can see each other. And I'll bring myself down also, and um, let's pair up and talk about how we might be able to use some of these tools. Okay, so Matt, separate out. So I'm assuming that you're ready. Matt, let them talk for a minute, just the two of them. Because uh, they are having yeah, and then we're like asking, like I I wanted to let them kind of talk for a little bit, and they were doing a good job. But then we'll pull back out. Okay, all right. So so just maybe you you and me, like how, um, you know, how might you use something like Edpuzzle to make learners active? So one of the things that we've done is even as early as second grade, but I'll give a middle school lesson on science, let's just say, on the solar system, you mm -hmm. can pull a video off of YouTube and create questions. So individual learners can maybe plug in headphones, watch the video, and the video stops at the question. And mm -hmm. I can answer it, and maybe you need to re-watch it again. So you go back and you watch it. So I'm at a different pace now. So each um, student will be at their individual pace with their individual question, not individual questions, but ha answering the questions on their own. Um, it'll also give the teacher an opportunity to walk around, see if students had questions. Um, so the student is interacting with the content, even though it's an individual video. Okay. All right, and then maybe I'll just pick, uh, well, maybe, maybe we can have either Fred um, or Christine, raise your hand again and talk. And maybe uh, Christine mentioned that she uses Bunsey, um, and maybe some of the other, some of the other, uh, maybe one of one of the two of them could raise their hand um, gotcha. and volunteer to come up. Yeah, or and I know. How would you use yeah. Poll Everywhere? Um, so. You have a question. So one of the ways I've seen it is, well, the elections are obviously one, or saying what is the direction, if we want to really go out on a limb, say what is the direction we want to take our class tomorrow? Do we want to do outdoor lesson utilizing science probes? Do we want to write a, a white paper? Do we want to give presentations on a research project? So you can have a poll there. Or you can, um, for an elementary classroom, read a story. What's going to happen next? And there'll be whatever five options, and can be used as a predictor. Ah, okay. Um, I love the idea of letting the students choose how they want to learn something. <laughs> um, yeah, and I know Christine um, does a lot with Flipgrid. So if you want to call her back up, um, uh, um, Christine, I'm hoping that you're okay with this, uh, but I'll bring you back up to. Um, Maybe talk about how you use Flipgrid. Okay, here you are again. But we warned you this time, right? It's not going to be as bad. So maybe, how do you use Flipgrid to, to make students more active in their own learning? Oh, um, that's a great question. Um, so we might do a weekend recap. Um, uh, we're learning how to use sequence words in our in our oral language and also in our writing. So the children um, will share about their weekend uh, over the weekend that I did, and then they have to include the words it might be first, next, then, lastly. Um, and um, it's also a way for our community to get to get involved because they it's um, I post it on our Twitter page, our classroom Twitter page, so the parents are seeing their children and listening to their children speak. I also have English language learners and it helps their oral language skills. Um, and they love hearing themselves uh, speak. And um, that's one way. Wow, that's great. Okay, great. thank you. Great, thank you. Great question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should I move on to the next slide? Sure. Or, or uh, okay. So um, let me move it, move on, and expand the slides. So we did that. Okay. Yep. So the, okay. the the last piece is really so the way you know framing from from the beginning is looking at the foundation of active learning and, and allowing students to be participants in in the classroom. Then we talked a little bit about 
tools that you could possibly use. And I know this may not be the best setting to, to look at those, but you have those resources. And I'm going to post those um, as, long, as well as this presentation on, on Twitter so people can participate that way and look through some of the things. But really what we're doing is looking at, you know, so Mitch asked the, the question, what does it mean? Who are the learners in front of you? When you know who they are, you can shift how you're teaching because teaching the way they learn, he also asked about impact. This is where you're going to make your greatest impact is when you know who the students are, you're teaching to their strengths, then you're going to make an impact within their learning environment. So we go to the next screen. So in, in our last little bit, and again, being the first time we've, we've done this and, and not a lot of people turning on their cameras to, to join in the small groups, the small groups aren't as um, robust, but I think one of the things in, in Fred, you can see here, your, your think pair shares right up there where I have seen the greatest impact in, with active learning is when you're utilizing some of these uh, instructional practice develop uh, really design. So when you're designing your lesson, which was part of the last kind of chunk, are you using some of these strategies or techniques or design theory to increase collaboration with students? So we heard Fred talk about the think, pair, share, and many of these others allow students to be part of the learning and not just passive um, learners in the class. And some of them are self-explanatory, like having small group work or, or journaling or presentations. Um, a lot of Current curriculum has built-in games, but when you think of the current curriculum and textbooks, they're they're printed for every district to buy. How are you going to adapt those learning games to your your current students? Now, really pushing the envelope, looking at case studies, maybe assign case studies to your students, and then match them with the tools that you just saw in the the last section. And how can you make that impact? As we were talking about with the learning. If you, you kick over to the to the right side, the last bullet, debates are some of my favorite, is, is look is posing a question and then having students choose a side and then use some of the presentation styles, use some of the tools that uh, we showed in the in the other group to maybe have that, you know, generating lists or role playing. It really allows some of our more dramatic students or students with different ways to express their learning uh, an avenue to to, to do that. So for the last group, um, I'd love for you to have a little bit more time in the group. Looking at this list, AL is active learning tools. What are some ways in your environment? I think it was great that Fred and Christine were joined up together because they have such a, a vast range from college to, to second grade of different ways you maybe utilized these develop uh, building strategies, not like school building, but building um, lessons. Within, within your environments to increase student voice um, in learning. So in the small groups, maybe talk about what these are and how you could use them in your, um, in your instructional setting. Okay, or the other thing that we could do is, why don't I bring myself down and why don't I bring, you know, Fred and Christine up here and maybe the three of you can have a discussion. Perfect. Okay. So let me sure. do that. Ah, uh, you're stuck with me again, Fred. <laughs> how, how, so, if you, so if you see that list over there, maybe talk about how you've used some of those and maybe how it can help other people. So just real quick on a side note. So Christine, Kathy's been chatting me like, my sound doesn't work. This doesn't work. It's like, I, I can't troubleshoot right now. Like, what the heck? <laughs> like, thing doesn't That's funny. Work. So maybe share away. I, I've got one I can share about. I actually haven't done it, but I've heard about it recently and I want to try it. The group quizzing. I have okay. heard I have heard a math professor who gave a test and after a few minutes, he told everyone, 
drop your pencil, stand up and talk. Mix, move around the room, drop your pencil and talk. You can't write anything down, but you can talk and you have, you have five like minutes or you have two minutes, go. And so everybody's, you know, so you're taking a test, man. And if there's some problem where your mind went blank, I mean, this would be a chance for you to pick someone else's brain, but internalize it. You can't just copy down what they tell you to write. You have to internalize it and you have two or three minutes to do that. Then everybody goes back to their seat, picks up their pencil and takes their own test. Wow, that's great. It's called drop your pencil. I am. Drop your pencil or something like that. <laughs> I want to try that. Have you done anything like that, you guys? Um, Christine done some of these. Well, um, you know what I was thinking? Uh, I, I don't know if I necessarily have done something just like that, but I was thinking that you gave the children or that teacher gave the children a chance to refresh and regroup and kind of get their whole body moving. And um, I'm just was curious to think how their scores were after, you know, if there was a way to measure like before and after, like collecting that data, I, I bet you there was a change in more engagement. I don't know, just thinking. So Christine, <laughs> talk about some of the small group work that you've done. Um, can you say that again, please? Talk about some of the small group work that you've done. Um, recently, we've been reading a lot of poems by Shel Silverstein to work on our word choice in our writing. And um, we do lots of little role plays and plays and let the children be the characters and interpret uh, the words that they think and the meanings of the words. And um, that's just one way. Um, we do lots of learning games in math in particular. Fred, you probably think that's pretty neat. Um, <sighs> we make things up all the time in that class, like rock, paper, scissor, count um, instead of shoot, you know, so the kids are adding up their, you know, they're counting their fingers and um, what else? I don't know. Uh, do a lot of journaling. Hmm. Concept maps. Absolutely. That's great for the English language learners um, developing their vocabulary. Um, kids not only have to, I don't know, thinking of the words, but we do a lot of pictures. Um, so the children will learn the words. Um, if they can't come up with the words themselves, they'll come up with pictures. They love to draw. I don't know. Hmm. How about you, Matt? What are your thoughts? Um, so, so my thoughts, and, and today actually I had an opportunity, and Christine knows this, but um, mm -hmm. I went to a group, a YMCA executive meeting. There was like 50 50 of them in the, in this room. It was at Grace Church in, in Foxborough. And we did a few different things. So we did, um, well, I did a presentation, but it was that was much more of a monologue of me. But then we did uh, some think, pair, share on leadership strategies and talking about facilitating effective meetings. But we also, <coughs> excuse me, we, we did some debating about leadership style. So I gave them four styles that they had to choose choose to be, and they had to go to the, the, the rooms. And just for the sake of, of this discussion, one was like a type A list, I'm going to get this done. One was super feel good, I, I want to make sure everyone's happy and, and, and everyone's mm. great. One, yeah, I wonder where you would be. And then there's <laughs> one like, right there. I want to know the list of things. And then the, the other group um, was like, I want to see the big picture. I'm not going to step in until I see it. And again, it was much more intricate than that. So we broke up into groups and then it was interesting because it was almost like 25% in each group, which is great as a presenter, like that was the goal of it. And then to start saying the authoritarian leader, why do you need to have, you know, it was North, South, East, West. Why do you need to have the real feel good um, people on board with what you're doing and vice versa? And, and we were standing in four sections of this church and mm -hmm. for them to kind of visually see that, 75% of the room had different leadership styles than them. Um, obviously, wow. they're not students, but it, it, it's what I did today to generate uh, kind of an active learning environment, get them up um, and, and, and really move move forward. It was similar to a role play, um, but, but they played the role of themselves or, or a leader. So I thought that was kind of interesting to see. So that's one that I did. Great. Uh, so again, I this is all new to me. Like this is the first. <laughs> first 
like this. So it's it's a, it's very different than actually presenting. Like Christine actually was in a presentation of mine a week ago, mm. and it's a much deal because you have the control of the the, the slides. Like I don't. I got to tell Mitch like move the slides, and <laughs> you, you can you can more visually call on people. So for me, being in, in the active learning environment, that to try something like this was just something I'd never done as well and, and something I wanted to try. So what did you learn? Uh, well, I learned, I'm going to just jump in and get it, get it started. Yeah. Is that or It's just you, you and me. <laughs> oh, okay. Nobody else is talking. Okay. okay. No. So I, so one of the things that I took away, cause I shared uh, something that I did today and, 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 Fred shared from really uh, an adult learner where he has young adults and, and, and Christine has seven year olds and myself, I worked with YMCA executives today, whatever you are in this teaching strategies are very similar. You can incorporate a lot of these styles in whatever learner. And this goes back to who's in front of you. If you have those learning strategies and en engage the audience that's in front of you, whatever age you can have the students, adult learners engage in the content and not just sitting there. Now, nobody, I'm looking at the list. Nobody here was at that meeting because, the, but the person before me was just talk, 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 and people were asleep. And, and I was like, Oh my gosh, I got to follow this person. They're going to be asleep. And then, you know, I got up and got, I got them moving a little bit and it just, people perked up and, and they were much more engaged. And then the dialogue became a lot more rich in, um, in our discussion. So it's interesting. I don't remember the name of the study, but there was a, there was a study that was done on different types of professional development that instructors, you know, teachers and, and instructors at in of higher education as, as well. You know, what type of professional development led to better gains for the students? And what they found is that content instruction, so if it, it, it lags. So if you're, if, if you, teach teachers how to do you know more about ELA or things specifically about ELA instruction or specific things about math instruction or specific things about science instructions those those sessions do not necessarily lead to significant increases in student learning but when you 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 work on techniques it doesn't matter what the content areas or even the age groups of the people who were who, of, of the students that the teachers are able to then much better able much uh, increase their competence in using the techniques and can apply it to whatever the topic is and basically that's what you're doing today is you know you you're presenting these different active learning environments or and uh, and the different tools and it really doesn't matter if you're teaching math or you're teaching social studies or you're teaching a college level course or you're teaching YMCA executives when you learn how to um, when you think about moving the learners into small groups or um, having them create games or, or, or do games or they're, or they're role playing or they're doing think, pair, share, those are the techniques that really increase student learning. Um, and th that's what we would really want to impart to, you know, to educators. Yeah. And I think that was a big piece of, of what our group was, was talking about today. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so we're, we're kind of heading up to the end of, end of our time. Um, and I don't remember, is this your last slide or is there another slide or two? I think that's the last one. Maybe it just says thank you at the end, but this was, uh, we did that. That was kind right. of like my, um, so, so the last, the last slide is really looking at, you've spent now 55 minutes here and how are you going to make this shift within your classroom? How are you going to take what you learned today or share with your colleagues and make um, a shift in your learning environment tomorrow? And that's kind of my ask to you to um, make that possible and um, make that that public for, for others to learn from as well. Uh, and, so I'll tell you, you know, I, the, um, the one that fascinated me was this idea of starting to give a test and then stopping it and telling people, okay, you've now seen the test. Um, I'm going to give you five minutes to go around the room, talk to somebody else, no talking, but you can ask any question you want to anybody who's in the, in the classroom. And then you'll, you'll go back to the test. Like, I love that idea. I'm going to see. If I can. Uh, that was, yeah, that was from Fred. So thank you, Fred. 
Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try that. And of course, I love your list of different act, active learning strategies, uh, the list back here. Um, and I even, you know, tweeted it and, um, and Facebooked it and got a lot of comments. People love this. This was, this was great. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, and thank you for the opportunity. I don't know, if, like you said, is this recorded? I'm going to put some stuff out, yep. share some resources. And you're going to be at FETC. You're going to be teaching. You're going to be doing how many sessions at FETC? I have four sessions at FETC, um, and one is on kind of what we did tonight, um, but live time. And, and mm -hmm. it's going to be a working session. It's actually going to be two hours where uh, participants are going to dive into both the tools. And then my hope kind of on the last slide where was the shift happens is that they can leave with an action plan and that they develop and start building lessons that they can put into practice when they get back to wherever they get back to. Um, um, that's one I'm going to talk. I have two sessions about uh, digital leadership and what it takes to shift cultures to active learning environments. And then um, I'm going to do, I'm sitting on a, a panel about how to make transformational schools. So that, that's going to be my time in, in sunny Florida in January. I'm not going to complain. Is Mitch frozen? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Or I'm, I'm the only one here and now, and you're playing a practical joke on me. But you missed probably called him up. I'm like, all right, let's see how we can set him up and, and we'll freeze Mitch. And, and stop the program and, and see what's going on. So since Mitch is frozen or he's having a cold one because he had to sit with me for an hour, I don't, I don't know. Hopefully it was a, maybe a margarita. Um, I'm going to wish, wish everybody well. And please someday I'll get to see you out there. Christine, you're stuck seeing me tomorrow. And Mitch, if you can hear me, um, thank you. And for all the other participants out there who... Um, chose to be watchers tonight. I appreciate you joining in and hopefully you take something from this tonight and impact your learners tomorrow within the classroom. So